Do you boys live together, did you? I lived with I lived with Max, yeah. And like we were on like a strict um, I mean, Lee will tell you this, like we were on like a strict thing where like we basically weren't allowed to go and do anything. So we're literally in this in this town. We became professional gamers for like six months. It was honestly <laughs> unbelievable. We'd train, come back, have like a quick moan about whatever, have a quick and then be like, I'm gonna jump online. And then we'd be on that till like half nine, eat, and then go to bed and then we'd do it all over again. Honestly, it was the most like out no like life outside rugby at all. So but yeah, it was an interesting experience. Did, sure. he, did he have his uh, weights rack in there? Or uh, no, it was Mac, Max. Oh, sorry, Malin. no, Max, Max Malin. Sorry. Oh, Malin. sorry. Right. No, you... Max the Heath. This guy, honestly, I'll tell you a story about this guy. It's the last. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah. So Max, Max has to isolate with um with COVID, right? And like, obviously, I can't remember. Did you get it? Did you not have it? You were close contact, something. So you're out for what? No, close contact days. with K-Pong, Yeah. So anyway, so Max, like, you, you, no Max is no Max. He does. You go on his Instagram. He's going and doing loads of lifting and everyone's like that's, that's brilliant like you know he's training so hard anyway max comes back on like the mon the monday after two weeks out and he's like oh, pat i've torn my car <laughs> and he's, gone, he's gone for a run the, the night before to try and get like he'd obviously done no running panic he out of his mind. <laughs> he's gone for a run and he's come back and torn his calf. And honestly, everyone's like, oh my God, Max, you've absolutely blown this. Like, you were the only person to be isolated. And he come back with the torn calf and didn't play for like a month and a half. Everyone's Max, like, what have you done? Oh, Max, is it true? Was it a panic run? Well, those ones literally oh, like 12 yeah. hours before you go in, like, fuck, I better get something in. <laughs> trying to get some stuff in in that minute, yeah. What do you enjoy? Like, which, uh, so what aspects of Saris to compare the aspects of Bristol, like, the two teams, which what what do you, what would you chop and change? Would you enjoy? Um, so let's start with Bristol. I definitely enjoyed like the way that they play the game. If and if sometimes it was like massively infuriating, like it would be pouring down with rain, and like at the beginning of the game, and Pat would just walk in, and be like, "Brilliant! It doesn't matter to us. We can just catch and pass, same as always." And it, I'm looking around and being like, "I don't know, mate. It's pretty well. <laughs> I wouldn't mind chasing some kicks here." Um, and like obviously the training facilities were like, well, they were the best I've ever I've ever been in. Um, and like the boys were awesome. Um, getting to play with the likes of, you know, to name a few, Charles, Semi, like obviously the headliners, like and they are by by and beyond like some of the most special talents I've ever played with. Like they they can do things that I've never seen and probably won't ever see other people do. Um and obviously where we lived. We lived in Clifton Village um, and it is like such good fun. And there's so many good like pubs and, you know, although I'm saying that you, you go out and get spotted, there are some nice secret drinking spots. You can go there and, and have a quiet one after the game, which is always good. Um, in terms of Saris, like obviously I'm biased. I've been there since I was 14. I mean, I've got to be careful what I say because obviously Ryan, you know, bays for Saris blood. But other than that, um, <laughs> I would say like, the the actual team feel around the club is like is unbelievable and there's some moments there that you're like this isn't how it's meant to be but it just just the way it is um they have a saying at Saris which I'm sure people know like you you work unbelievably hard and we treat unbelievably well and that is like that is like so true in every walk of life at, at the club um you know we have I would safely say one of the worst facilities in the league and you know people seem to just get so much energy by like we get like a new like dumbbell in the club and everyone's like, oh my God, this is unbelievable. And like, you're looking at like <laughs> boys who have like won everything in the game. And, like we get excited about a dumbbell because that's just like, it's the little things that we sp speak about. Um, but yeah, like, uh, like, so for example, we spoke about before that Bristol game, um, you know, how we were like, frankly, underdogs and we like absolutely love that. We love like the scrap, the scrapping element of it. Like we'd rather win ugly than, win by 50 points in a way like that's so much more telling for us the team um I mean there was one there's one memory that I have Saris which is when I was a bit younger and I just thought this was amazing in terms of summing up the club so we were on like an eight game losing streak I think we'd just we'd just been pumped by Claremont on this memorable Monday night in like deep snow um and that racker had scored something like four tries maybe even five like freak of nature no one laid a hand on him so we come into the meeting the next day and they're like right big team meeting and I'm thinking this is like crisis meeting I did one of my first ever games on the bench I was like oh my god I'm part of like this memory of like I'll probably never get picked again or whatever we sit around this room 
And Mark McCall just stands there in silence, right? And then he just, the, all the coaches just walk out and there's all the players left. And the players just go like, you know, what's going on, boys? And Billy turns around and goes, boys, I know what the problem is. We haven't been on the piss together for a couple of weeks. And so everyone stands up. They, they knew this was going to happen. Bill was teed up to say Everyone stood up, got in their cars and drove into, into the centre of St Albans. And they booked out this bar for us. And we sat there for an hour, like over an hour and a half, just drinking. They had like loads of beers lined up and we're just there drinking away. This is on like a Thursday afternoon, right? And uh, um, I don't think we lost the game again until like May when like they put out all the week, all the week boys. So like, honestly, it was like the most mental thing. Like we're sitting there, I was expecting to have, be like, have an absolute hairdryer treatment. And then the, the thing that came out of it, like, the worst thing I got out of that was a headache the day after and then like a disgusting hangover. That was like, that's, that's like, the way that, I, is, <laughs> that is how it should be done. That is like, yeah. That is how it should be done. I'm so envious of that. Like, and that's one thing I can't stand with COVID at the moment. I don't know what you boys are like. It's been a little bit more relaxed down down in England, but like it's just absolutely hammered socials up here. Like we cannot do anything anymore. It's got it's got a bit better recently, but that whole time through COVID, and we travel away. Obviously, we we fly to most places. So when you chart a flight, well, nine times out of ten, they're coming back straight after the game. Yeah, Whereas, you can't even stay around. Like we play Connor in Galway this weekend. They were like the best weekends ever because you, you, yeah. you were playing Connor and you knew you were going out in Galway after for a pint and it was unbelievable. Whereas COVID's just fucking ruined all of that. I oh, know. It's honestly, it's mental. And also like, it's also the guilt side of it as well. Like, you're like, should I be telling people that we're going out for beers? But like, I'm like, the rest of the country. So we might as yeah. well, like, yeah, you know what I mean? It's not our fault that we play rugby alongside it. Like, have you boys got any um, mental trips planned away anytime soon? I remember last time you, you played us up here, you went skiing or something fucking after. Yeah. Um, very ski. So we were meant to, we had a week off uh, about two weeks ago. And we were meant to be going to an Austrian. Uh, I think we were going to go to like a St. Anton version of somewhere. Um, but that actually got called off because they closed the borders. So um, a few of us ended up going to... Richard Barrington stag do in Tenerife, which had its, um, which I would say was incredibly insightful with like how, you know, it was like a four day trip. And I think I learned more about these lads in four days than I did in like the last like five years of being in the club. But honestly, it was unbelievable. I'm pretty um, sure that's where I got my, I got some messages from boys that have played at the club before. And Sean Maitland sent me one from yeah. there saying, good luck on your chart. And he looks so ropey. <laughs> like, <laughs> Walking in the sunshine somewhere. <laughs> yeah, honestly, like, it was it was unbelievable. He was there, yeah. <laughs> um, but I actually, I've, I've heard there's a rumor that um, we might be going to Chicago with like the women's team in preseason. So that, 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 we'll see what happens with that. But if that is the case, that would be that would be quite a good fun. 